The drama continues in Coronation Street tonight at 7.30 and 8.30 and the Platts need someone to blame. Now on ITV, it's the news. Good evening, welcome to ITV News Meridian. Tonight's headlines in the South. A callous attack, the shooting of ducks and geese leaves a village in shock. Confession in the cards, the murderer who revealed all to a tarot reader. And fabulous at 50, the marathon mum celebrating a milestone. Good evening. A police hunt is underway for those responsible for killing a number of ducks and geese in Hampshire village. It's believed an air rifle was used to shoot the birds at the duck pond near the junction of Fleet Road and High Street last week in Hartley Wintney. Police have described the gun attack as disgusting, as Mary Stanley now reports. A picturesque village scene and one treasured by the residents of Hartley Whitney. But the peace of this spot has been shattered with the killing of six ducks with an air rifle, including two young geese, part of this brood. It's just a very sad reflection on society, really. Who would do something to such innocent little ducks? Perhaps sometimes it's a misguided sense of power. They've got a, a weapon and they want to find a use for it, but we deplore it. We've watched the goslings. There were seven originally. We've watched them grow up. Just in just a matter of weeks and they've been absolutely delightful. They're an absolute joy and it's tragic that there's only four of them left now. It's not an isolated incident. The RSPCA says there have been eight air gun attacks against wildlife in Hampshire already this year. 250 across the country and the numbers are rising year on year. It just seems just ridiculous that this is a lovely village and people are really family minded and it's a vibrant and happy community. Why would anybody want to come and, and spoil that? We have a lovely cricket green here and the, and the children come down and the families come down often after school or at the weekends to, to look at the ducks and to have their picnic. So it's, a, it's an integral part of our, our life down here. Police warn this is an offence under the Animal Welfare Act. Those responsible could face a £20,000 fine or six months in jail. The RSPCA wants tighter controls on the sale of air guns to stop these callous attacks. Mary Stanley, ITV News, Hartley Whitney. And you can find more on that and all of today's stories on our website. Just go to itv.com forward slash meridian. In other news, a 12-year-old girl remains in hospital this evening after a jet ski crash off the Hampshire coast. Two adults and two children were believed to have been on the jets when the accident happened on Sunday at Cowshot. The young girl was taken to Southampton General Hospital, but her injuries aren't thought to be life-threatening. Firefighters have been tackling a wildfire on open land on the border of Hampshire and Surrey. Crews are at the scene of the blaze at Caesars Camp near Rushmore. It's not yet known what caused the fire. People in Dorset are being warned to keep windows and doors closed as a landfill fire continues to burn in Ringwood. Crews have been at Chatsworth Blue Haze since 10 o'clock yesterday evening. Motorists are also being warned there could be poor visibility in the area because of the smoke. Dozens of jobs could be lost at Reading Base Prudential. The pension company is consulting on plans to move 80 jobs to Mumbai. It says there's been a fall in demand for its products. There are warnings jobs could be moved offshore as early as October. Dozens of campaigners have staged a noisy but peaceful protest at Heathrow today against plans for a third runway at the airport. The government is considering two options for expansion, but it's claimed the £18 billion scheme would be an environmental disaster. The protest comes on the eve of the airport's 70th birthday. Our transport correspondent Mike Pearce reports. Happy birthday to you. With Heathrow celebrating its 70th anniversary tomorrow, a timely protest by those opposed to expansion. There were balloons and cake, but the message was far from a happy one. 
The new runway would mean the demolition of hundreds of homes in this village alone. Essentially the message we're saying to them on their 70th birthday is we think they're big enough already that they should not have a third runway. What would that runway mean, do you think? That runway would mean the destruction of this village where we are right now in Harmonsworth. It would mean uh, a quarter of a million more planes a year using Heathrow. That would mean more air pollution, more noise, more traffic. Almost 800 black planes were planted, one for each home that would be demolished. Heathrow argued the scheme will benefit the economy and create thousands of jobs. Some locals, though, simply don't agree. No third runway. To be honest, uh, I'd rather not think of a third runway here. I'd rather think of Harmonsworth existing and being the beautiful village it is and always is and always will be. It's really a very large airport. It's perfectly formed. They can have it how it is, but we don't want it spreading its wings and coming and taking over more of the villages round about. A government decision is due in July with two Heathrow options recommended by its airport's commission. But depending on the EU referendum, that may be delayed. Gatwick continues to lobby for a second runway at its airport. Meanwhile, Heathrow will hold its own 70th celebrations tomorrow. Mike Pierce, ITV News, Heathrow. A tarot card reader has described how a murderer confessed during a reading she was giving in Brighton. Jane Braden had to keep star Randall Hansen talking for an hour before police arrived. He's now been jailed for a minimum of 15 years. Andy Dickinson reports. Jane Braden shuffles tarot cards as she's done for 25 years. Cards that eventually led to the conviction of a killer. Star Randall Hansen visited her on May the 4th last year her reading leading to his confession of a murder. It was a shock. I think the shock came afterwards. Um, but I didn't feel... I felt sorry for him at the time. I thought, well, you know, you are desperate and you need my help. And that's what I'm going to give you. 50-year-old Randall Hansen had stabbed his housemate, 70-year-old Derek Marnie, to death and left his body on the kitchen floor for 10 days before he walked into Jane's small shop. She says she knew straight away what she had to do. He said, no, I killed him. I didn't mean to. I've killed him. Um, and I don't know what to do. So we carried on talking. And I said, but the one thing I have to tell you is that I really need to call the police. But as long as that's OK with you. So he said, yes. Jane then waited for almost an hour for officers to arrive. It wasn't until they then searched the home he shared with Mr Marnie that he was arrested for murder. He's now been jailed for life. In a statement, Sussex police said this was a tragic case and their thoughts go out to the victim and his family over such a violent and unexpected crime. Derek Marnie's sister said, I still cannot believe that Derek is no longer with us. This past year has been so difficult for myself and my family. Andy Dickinson, ITV News, Brighton. An investigation is underway after a pensioner was conned out of £20,000 in South Sea by someone pretending to be from a water company. Police have released an e-fit of a man who targeted the 91-year-old man at an address in Red Wing Court. The man claimed the water was contaminated. While he distracted the victim, another man entered the property and stole the cash. Sandbanks in Dorset has been named Britain's most expensive seaside town. An annual review by the Halifax has found the average price of a home in Sandbanks cost £665,000. Brighton Festival has been hailed as one of a kind by its guest director Laurie Anderson after it came to a close last night. It's thought around 200,000 visited the event. Crowds that flocked to the Brighton Pavilion were so big organisers had to stop them spilling into the road. And the world record for the longest ever game of football has been broken in Lansing. The 105-hour mark was crossed by the two teams this afternoon. The match being staged in memory of three Sussex players, including Jacob Schilt and Matt Grimstone, killed in the Shoreham air crash. We've got such an amazing team behind us, which you know, are patching us up as we go along. We've had probably about 10, 11 hours sleep in total since Thursday, but yeah, just keep going, go for each other and go for the three boys behind us. 
Now, it's a big achievement running a marathon, but imagine running 31 of them. That's what Anna Thubron from Buckinghamshire has done. And what's even more impressive is she's done it in 31 days. The mum of four is due to complete her challenge tomorrow, as Lauren Hall reports. It's not how most people would choose to celebrate their 50th birthday. Anna Thubron from Wendover in Buckinghamshire is quite literally using miles to mark this milestone. More than 800 of them. Throughout this month, Anna has been running a marathon every single day. It's her way of showing that turning 50 doesn't mean you have to slow down. Some say once you've reached 50, it's all downhill. No such luck for Anna on today's marathon through the Chilterns. Oh, nearly there. But 30 days in, she still seems to be enjoying herself. I'm absolutely loving it, yeah, really loving it. She's been joined along the way by friends and relatives, and it's all for a good cause, raising money for the Humanity Direct charity, which funds surgery for children in developing countries. Her many marathons have taken her to places like the New Forest and the Isle of Wight. Today, she was closer to home, where her family gathered to greet her at the finish line. Well, to do one marathon for most people is an amazing achievement. To do one every day for 30 days with one more to go, it's just it's an incredible achievement. She's incredible. It's She's crazy. done so well. We're so proud of her. Yeah. I don't get it myself. It's weird. <laughs> family think I'm crackers. Um, friends think I'm crackers. But I've had the most amazing support. Tomorrow, she does it all over again. The last marathon for the last day of May. After that, she can finally put her feet up, which she says will be the best birthday present. Lauren Hall, ITV News. Now, whether you've already decided to vote to leave or to remain in the EU, or if you are still undecided on the EU referendum, ITV wants to hear from you. We're broadcasting two special live programmes hosted by Julie Etchingham. The EU referendum on June the 23rd will shape Britain's future. To mark this historic event, ITV will broadcast two special live programmes. The first, Cameron and Farage Live, the EU referendum, will be on Tuesday, June the 7th. Then the ITV referendum debate will air just two days later on Thursday the 9th of June, featuring politicians from both sides of the argument to remain or to leave the EU. We want to hear from you on the questions you'd most like politicians to answer on the EU referendum. Simply submit your questions in one of the following ways before Friday, June the 3rd, and you could be part of a live studio audience on one of these programmes to put to the politicians the issues that matter to you the most. Simply send us your questions to itv.com slash referendum programmes, or you can email us on debate at itv.com. Philippa Drew, how's your weather? From blizzards to pool, driving through Europe, Eurotunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Hello there. Well, it's been a fairly pleasant bank holiday weekend across the region, but over the next 24 hours, things aren't looking quite so good. More in the way of cloud and rain moving in from the east as we go through the next 24 hours. And we can see just what's going on. Currently, we've got largely clear skies across central and western parts of the UK, but out towards the east, thickening cloud already moving in and rain will arrive later on as well, gradually working its way westwards through tomorrow with some heavy bursts mixed in too. But back to tonight, all fairly quiet for the most part. I think largely dry, clear spells out towards Towards the west but towards the end of the night the first signs of thickening cloud and outbreaks of rain creeping into the far east there and that's really how we start the day tomorrow so any brightness tending to be out towards the west further east clouding up all the while and the rain continuing to make slow and steady progress westwards in fact for all of us tomorrow afternoon looks set to be rather cloudy and dank further outbreaks of rain just about anywhere and the potential for some heavy bursts in there too as a result feeling fairly cool especially when you add on that breeze so a quick look at the high tides for tomorrow then for portland around quarter past two in the morning and then around quarter past three in the afternoon and looking ahead to the next few days rather cloudy at times further outbreaks of rain but where we do see any sunshine feeling fairly warm euro tunnel the shuttle sponsors itv meridian weather keeping a close eye on summer the pollen count sponsored by Eye eyedrops 
So fairly good news for hay fever sufferers over the coming days. With the arrival of more unsettled weather, those pollen levels will dip to moderate, perhaps even low at times, and that's where they'll stay for the rest of the working week. Take care. Bye-bye for now. That's all from the team here at ITV Meridian. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you later on. Bye for now.